Thank you. Okay, well, the first order of business is um, Pledge of Allegiance, and we're calling on David Sampson, our district governor nominee. Good evening, everyone. Please feel free to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the nation which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, David. We have words of inspiration from Angela Ponte, who is our district governor nominee designate. Well, the words or information or, or inspiration are about the Rotary Opens Opportunity Year that we're, that we're winding down. And the words come from our president of Rotary International, Holgar Nack. And he says, the world is a different place today when we announce the theme of Rotary Opens Opportunities. We can be proud of how we updated what Rotary can be this year. Let's continue on this path always taking care of our clubs and our friends in the clubs. They are precious and they keep Rotary alive and thriving. Rotary is a community of people who live their values by putting them into action. In these extraordinary times, there is no doubt that we must place increased emphasis on service. This is our opportunity to show the world what service above self means for Rotarians. There are so many opportunities waiting for us that can help us change the world Let's seize them together and get ready to open doors to achieving greater things. As we open these doors to new ideas, our minds and our hearts are also open. Remember that everything we do in Rotary opens another opportunity for someone somewhere. In my final words of inspiration, I want to thank District Governor Charlene for her leadership in keeping our district open to opportunities in this most unusual of Rotary years. Thank you very much, Angela. Um, and we're going to hear our own Rotarian, Betty Galligan, sing God Bless America. Are we experiencing technical difficulty? Yourself. Hello, Kyle. God bless America. Land that I Kyle. love. Stand beside her. The light from above, okay, so the no, from the hear mountains audio. to I the hear. prairie. Okay. I can hear it. You I can, can hear, hear it. it. We can hear. hear it. We can hear, hear it, Charlene. It came on. Yes. Oh, I'm the only one who can't hear it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, wait, I can hear. I'm sure she was wonderful. I can I hear. Can hear. Home, <laughs> She's still singing. Okay, well, thank you very much. <laughs> um, I'd like to turn the meeting over to past District Governor Jack Ryan, who is our district parliamentarian and Sergeant at Arms, um, to do a little bit of explanation for tonight. Thank you, Charlene. Uh, well, it's pretty simple. Uh, we'll be voting to affirm as a body on all matters other than the 2000. 21-2022 budget, which will be voted on by the district 2021-22 sub presidents. Okay, thank you. We're thank you very much. Okay, thank you. 
Um, at this time, I'm calling on Harvey Treef to present the secretary's report. Thank you very much, uh, District Governor Charlene, and hello, everyone. And these are the minutes from the business meeting of June 17th, 2020. The meeting was called to order by District Governor Steve Albright at 7.04 p.m. District Governor nominee Billy Roberts led the Pledge of Allegiance with great graphics on in the background. District Governor nominee designate Dave Sampson offered very timely words of inspiration. And after a rousing rendition of God Bless America, the business meeting ensued. Uh, District Secretary Harvey Tree presented minutes of the previous meeting and a motion was made by District Governor nominee Billy Roberts, seconded by District Treasurer Roger Cabral, resulted in a unanimous approval. District Treasurer Roger Cabral was next. He offered a brief review of the 2019-2020 year ending on June 30th. Stated that the principal revenue was from dues which amounted to $87,000 from 65 clubs, which is approximately, which was approximately $1,000 over the previous year. Membership levels are dropping and as a result, the dues have increased from 40 to $45. One third of the revenue goes to fund knowing any pets. The rest goes to district leadership expenses and training. Uh, Roger noted that the biggest financial challenge is balancing the budget. The district is in a 137,000 cash position and dues will re probably remain level for the foreseeable future. Uh, after Roger's report was concluded, a motion was made by Harvey Treef, seconded by Chris David, resulting in a unanimous acceptance. Following the treasurer's report, an extensive uh, foundation report was offered by Chris David. Uh, the report was extremely extensive. I do have the report available and would be very, very happy to supply it to anybody that wants to see it. Uh, a motion was made by District Governor nominee Billy Roberts and, to, and seconded by Beth Richards resulting in a unanimous acceptance. Um, following Chris uh, past District Governor Chris David's report, uh, past District Governor Jack Ryan went over the election procedures and stated that no ballots will be used at this particular time and a voice vote will be required from current presidents will be required. Uh, at this point, we had the announcement of candidates by District Governor Steve Albright. He announced the district officers to be District Governor-elect Charlene Jarris, District Governor nominee Billy Roberts, District Governor nominee designate Dave Sampson, a motion by Bob McMacken and seconded by Lisa Lebro, resulted in a unanimous acceptance. Uh, budget and Finance Committee officers were announced. Uh, past District Governor Bill Tennant for uh, the term 7 1, July 1st, 2020 to June 30th, 2022. Um, District Governor nominee Billy Roberts for the same term. District Governor nominee designate Dave Sampson for the same term. Motion to approve made by Lois Druckman and seconded by Trish Morse. Uh, district nominating committee officers were then announced. Uh, William David, July 1st, 2020 to June 30th, 2022. Joel Kepke, same term. Motion to accept by Lois Druckman and seconded by Bob McMakin. Council on Legislation representatives. Russell Bertrand, July 1st, 2020 to June 30th, 2023. Chris, past district governor, Chris, uh, Chris David, alternate, same term, motion by Andrea Bauman, 
seconded by Lois Druckmann. District treasurer position, Roger Cabral, Rotary Club of Fall River. I have to say that a little bit louder. Rotary Club of Fall River. Uh, <laughs> July 1st, 2020 to June 30th, 2023. Juan Barrera, assistant treasurer, Rotary Club of Randolph, Avon, Canton. June 30, same term, June 30th to July 1st, 2023. Motion to accept by Lois Druckmann, seconded by Bob McMacken. District Secretary position, Harvey Treef, Rotary Club of Fall River, July 1st, 2020 to June 30th, 2023. Uh, Ward's presentation was then made by District Governor Steve Albright. Again, the awards are included in my minutes, far too numerous to bring up at this point, but are available for anybody that wants them. Following the awards presentation, remarks from District Governor-elect Charlene Jarrist. She talked about the effect that the motto Rotary Opens Opportunity has had upon us. She reflected on the arrival of virtual Zoom meetings and how they relate to the fact that we are experiencing isolation during this pandemic. And thank God it's almost over. She announced her virtual Zoom installation to be on June 26th to coincide with the installation of the Rotary Club of Fall River. More information to follow at that point. She ended her remarks with the exhortation, quote, let's go for it. Unquote. <laughs> Following Charlene's remarks, a memorial service for members who had passed during the 2019-2020 year. Names announced and testimonials were offered. The names announced were Elwin Miller from Born Sandwich Club, Jerry Baronis from the Braintree Club, Robert Roth from the Cohasset Club. Ella Donnelly from the East Providence Seekonk Club. VJ Joshua from the Norwood Club. Rita Blue from the Osterville Club. Harold Green from the Taunton Club. Nick Iannuzzi from the Taunton Club. Al St. Ives from the Taunton Club. James Russell from the Warwick Club. And Marianne Eubanks from the Yarmouth Club. The meeting was adjourned at 847, a motion by District Governor Billy Roberts, nominee Billy Roberts, and seconded by everyone in attendance. Respectfully submitted Harvey Treef, past president Rotary Club of Fall River, and secretary District 7950. Thank you very much, Harvey. I'll entertain a motion to affirm and accept Harvey's report. Move to approve. Valerie Perry. Very good. Second. Who's, who made the motion, please? I'm Valerie sorry. Perry. Oh, Valerie. And seconded. Third, second. Sorry, okay. um, Thank you very much. Let's see. And the treasurer's report, Roger Cabral. Just had to unmute myself and try to figure that out. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Roger Cabral, a member of the Rotary Club of Fall River since 1997, and I've been your district treasurer since uh, July 2017. I'm here to provide a brief overview of the district's 2020 operating results. That's the year that ended June 30, 2020. And I'll also give you a look at the interim results for this year to date. Um, I do have financial statements done through April 30th, which is <clears throat> 10 months of this, of this Rotary year. Um, just big picture, and this is the way I'd look at the this is the way I look at the district's financial situation and financial existence, that the district exists to provide support and leadership training for your club, and that every dollar that the district spends is with that goal in mind, that it's to support your club and to train your club's leaders. Um, the district leadership comes out of your clubs, and the district's budget is approved by the incoming president elects every year. We'll approve that later. Uh, later on in the program. Uh, the district exists principally to serve our clubs. Principal source of revenue from the clubs is a principal source of revenue to the district 
is dues from the club. And in 2020, we collected $92,000 from 65 clubs. Um, the trick at the district level, we, we generally know what our expenses are going to be, but to collect enough revenue from the clubs to cover those expenses. And that's challenging because um, membership trends across the district have been trending down for the past several years. And when membership counts go down, dues have to go up to, uh, to bring in the same level of revenue. So um, we either raise dues or we cut expenses and um, we try to balance that every year, certainly. And, and dues have not increased for a couple of years. So where does the money go when, when in 2020, um, and, and you know what I said earlier, it's, it's, it's the district exists for leadership training. 31% of the dues revenue that we collected, $29,000 in 2020, um, supported a president-elect training, assistant governor training at PETS. That was $29,000 expended. And PETS last year was completed. If it had happened a week later, probably wouldn't have happened. But um, you know the district managed to get it in last year. Um, there are really no other concentrations but for PETS. Um, the rest of the budget is, and, and the budget certainly you'll be looking at it, it's been distributed, the financials have been distributed, training for district leadership, other district support services and administrative costs, basically helping district leadership help you is, is, is what the budget's all about. Um, in a normal year, the district's also producing a number of live events. That certainly hasn't happened this year, but, but the goal is to uh, run those events, the assembly, mid-year meeting, foundation dinner, to run those at break even when there's a profit made at the foundation dinner, that money's uh, generally sent to Rotary International to support, uh, to support Rotary International. So moving on to the current year, um, 2021's been an odd year. A couple of you might've noticed that things have been a little bit different this year than they have been in the past. Um, if it had been a typical year and we budgeted for this year as a typical year, the budget was for $28,000 loss. Um, through eight, and we can talk about you know budgeted losses later. Um, you know, through April 30th, we're actually showing a $76,000 positive bottom line with two months in the year to go. Um, with that positive bottom line, there's been some discussion at the district leadership level about providing the club some dues credit towards your 2021-2022, 2021-2022 dues um, because they, we've got that surplus this year. Um, the district has not been able to deliver in, in this uh, rotary year, the programming that normally would have been happening. Um, you know, nobody's traveling anywhere. We've not been able to hold any, any events. Pets cost $6,000 versus the $28,000 that was budgeted. Uh, there are some different expenses, things like Zoom and postage costs have increased fairly dramatically, but in general, uh, budget uh, expenses are much lower than they were projected to be. So the district's running a, a pretty good surplus uh, this year, and and we're talking about returning, finding a way to return, uh, return some of that to the club. But there's no final determination made on that. But but that decision will be made in the next, uh, you know, probably next 30 to 60 days. Dues were $45 per member for 2021, and the district generally budgets a loss, although. We budget fairly conservatively and have never really realized those losses. We're always budgeting for what expenses could be and expenses at the budgeted levels have never really been realized. If we did realize those expenses, we'd have to either cut expenses again or raise dues, but the district does have some fairly good cash reserves that could absorb a loss if one of those were to occur. Uh, we started the year with $135,000 in the bank and you know, with the profitability that uh, of the current year, that balance is, has just uh, has just grown. Um, unless there are any questions, and I'd welcome questions, I'll use that as as my segue into the budget presentation, uh, which which Billy is going to lead. I think I need to um, call for a motion to accept your uh, financial re your, your treasurer's report for the last year. So, um, and then you can you and Billy can present. The, um, the budget for the president's elect. So uh, I would call mm -hmm. for a motion to affirm. Motion to accept the budget from last year. Thank you very much. Is Dr. there a second? 
Okay, very good. Thank you very much. The budget, uh, that motion is affirmed. Thank you. Okay, Roger. I'm going to turn this meeting over now to both Roger and Billy. Um, you know, Billy Roberts, uh, District Governor elect. Hello, friends. Good evening. How are you? Um, uh, it's a pleasure to, uh, to greet you. We're now going to uh, vote on the budget that was proposed for the year 21-22. The theme for the year is service to change lives. And uh, I think all the, this is directed to the president elects uh, who are to cast a, a vote. So, and you have all received that budget uh, in a revised budget actually in recent days. So uh, Roger, let me turn it over to you and ask you to really proceed. Thank you. So, um, the, I mean, the budget, uh, the budget for 2022 is uh, really in line with prior years. Uh, there's no increase in dues revenue. Uh, it's proposed at the same $45 a member it was last year. And, and expenses are generally consistent with what they've been budgeted over the years as we as when, when we do budget, we, we look at a multi-year trend of what expenses have been budgeted and what has really been realized. And we make minor adjustments, but there, there have not been a lot of changes. Hopefully we'll have a real pets this coming year. And we've, you know, we've, we've budgeted for normal pets. I think the only major change, uh, major change in the current budget as proposed is there's some, there's some additional uh, dollars that were put toward the uh, the district website looking to, um, and I'm sure everyone goes to the district website and thinks it's great as it is, but others others have identified some problems and think we need to spend some money on, on making it better. So um, we've got, we've added $6,000 to the budget, which we're told is a good number to, the, to, to bring our website into the, uh, into the 2020s um, from, from the 80s and, you know, hopefully get that working better for all of you. But I don't think there's a lot of changes. We are we are budgeting a thirty-eight thousand dollar loss for the year, and as I mentioned earlier, we you know we budgeted losses. We generally budget losses, and those losses have not been realized. What the district generally does realize is a is a modest profit, a modest positive bottom line, um, to break even. I, I would say, and I've I've got those I've got those numbers. But generally, you know, this is a, a bigger loss than we've budgeted. In, in prior years, but not that much bigger um, than it's been. So um, in the event this were to occur again, we've got the cash balances available to absorb it. So um, I, I'm available all the time. If anyone, you've got the budget or you wanna talk about financial statements or anything, um, you can find me and I'd be pleased to talk with anybody and answer any questions that anyone, um, that anyone has. So are there any questions now for the treasurer? Can I about ask? Yes, Could I please. ask a question? Yes, please. Yeah, I was going to say, you mentioned there might be a, a surplus, although we're talking about a deficit, but if there was a, a, a surplus, would it be possible for the district to reimburse the clubs? Uh, I'll head this year, the expense of Zoom, either the club paid for it or else a, one of the members, perhaps the president paid for it. So if there, there were some sup, sup, uh, supplementary money and you were thinking of returning to the clubs, I think that might be one expense that they would appreciate. Yeah, so the, the conversation's been around something that would effectively be a credit against your 20, 20, 21, 22 dues. So the dues are $45 a okay. member, but the credit would reduce the 45 to something less than that. How the club chose to apply that money, we every club would get to make their own decision as to what they Great. did with those savings. and. And that number's not been determined yet, but you know, waiting to get we get closer to our our the district's year end. That's collective our all of us our 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 fiscal year end to figure out how much money's left, what the bottom line looks like, um, once all the expenses are close to finalized for the year. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Governor Elect uh, Billy. I yes, don't please. have a Dave Clifton, uh, past district governor. I don't have a question, but I have a comment. Please. I thought that the treasurer, Roger Cabral, did an outstanding job of not only presenting uh, what happened during the current Rotary year, but uh, the presentation of what we can expect for the future. 
he went into lots of details. Hats off to you, uh, Treasurer Roger Cabral. Thank, thank you, David. Appreciate it. Thank you. David, I think we all agree our, our treasurer is quite a character. Yes. <laughs> we have the best. We love this guy. Thank you. <laughs> Are there any other comments or questions? No, so, uh, so to the president-elect, I'd like to call for a vote. All those in favor of approving the budget as presented, please uh, raise your hand, and make a noise and say, hey. 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 Mr. Governor-elect, I'd like to um, cast a proxy vote for the incoming president of the Woonsocket Club, uh, Nicole O'Brien, who says that she is, a she is accepting and thinks this is a great budget. Are there any opposed? Okay, hearing none. Thank you very much, Roger. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Roger. And and um, past District Governor David is absolutely right on. You you're the best. And and Harvey is an absolutely fabulous secretary. I really really appreciated um, this whole year with you. Um, okay, so so this is this next um, piece is fun. Uh, let's see. Oh no, that not not quite not quite yet. I need to let you know that um, the uh, annual district foundation report was sent to you, and I do hope everyone had an opportunity to um, take a look at it, read it through, and um, we're not going to discuss it because it's kind of detailed. And as I said, everyone had plenty of opportunity to uh, to look at it. So I, at this point, I'm looking for a motion to accept the annual foundation report. Madam Chair, I, I, I would like to move that we accept it and also acknowledge that our district received kudos from Rotary International for the uh, really efficiency of our current uh, district foundation chair. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Billy. And that's, yes, absolutely. Uh, we, I, I've been saying this for longer than this year, but we have an excellent, excellent district team and um, really professional people. It's just a joy working with everybody. Um, okay, so I, you made the motion to- So, so move. I second. Okay. okay, great. Is there any concern about it? Any objections? We're hearing none. Uh, then um, it's affirmed, thank you. Now comes my, the fun part for me. I get to present the slate for next year's leadership. So I'm going to read through the whole slate and we're going to be able to move it as a unit. So um, for, um, I present to you William Roberts, District Governor-Elect, Rotary Club of Barnstable Sunrise, David P. Sampson, District Governor-Nominee, Rotary Club of Bourne Sandwich, Angela Ponte, District Governor-Nominee-Designate, uh, Rotary Club of Quincy, Mass. For Budget and Finance Committee, I present Gregory Roach, past District Governor, to be named from July 1, 2021 to June 30th, 2022. For the Nominating Committee, I present Shamim Awan, um, Assistant Governor, to be named from July 1, 2021 to June 30th, 2023 and Brad Boyd, Assistant Governor, to be named from July 1, 2021 to June 30th of 2023. The District Treasurer positions, Roger Cabral, past Assistant Governor, Treasurer, Rotary Club of, past President, Rotary Club of Fall River, from July 1, 2021 to June 30th of 2022. And Sharon Hill, Assistant Treasurer, Rotary Club of Randolph Avon Canton, from July 1, 2020 to June 30th, 2023. And District Secretary position, Harvey Treef, Rotary Club of Fall River, Secretary, um, past President of the Rotary Club of Fall River, from July 1, 2020 to June 30th of 2023. So at this point, I'm looking for a motion to affirm. Um, um, Madam Chair, uh, just uh, an adjustment, please, for mm -hmm. Sharon Hill. The term should be July 20th, July 1st, 2021. Oh, 2020. typographical error. My apologies. Yeah, typos. Okay. And for Harvey. I'm going to have to speak to my administrative assistant. Yeah, and <laughs> for Harvey Treat, it should be July 1st, 2021. Yes, same thing. Yes. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that forward. Sure. That will be corrected in the record. And sure. now I am still looking for a motion to affirm. Motion to affirm with the amendments that uh, Governor-elect Billy Roberts just mentioned. Okay, thank you very I much. I second it. Lucy Hurston. 
Great. Any objections? Hearing none, this vote is by unanimous consent. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay. Um, another piece of business that we need to address tonight is to accept the um, update for our policies and guidelines manual. And um, Russell Bertrand, who's the um, uh, Council on Legislation representative and past district governor is in Elkhart, Indiana, where I understand they have abysmal uh, internet service. So his Lieutenant uh, Paulette Boudreau, who is absolutely critical and instrumental in, um, in putting this project together is going to present on his behalf. Thank you, District Governor Charlene. So um, past District Governor um, Russell Burton and I would like to thank uh, the committee for the long hours, the careful thought, the input and the detailed review that went into this 24 page document to help District 7950 run smoothly. And they include past District Governor Joe Clancy, past District Governor Dave Clifton, past District Governor Steve Albright, District Governor Charlene Char Jarris, District Governor elect Billy Roberts, District of Governor nominee Dave Sampson, and District Governor nominee designate Angela Ponte. So as you can see, being district governor is not a one year commitment. It starts three years prior to the district governor year and continues well beyond that. So I extend a big thank you, not only for the work that they did on this committee, but for their dedication to the Rotary Rotarians of District 7950. We are the best. I'm sorry, thank we're you. jumping in the truck and we're leaving. Okay. Yes, we are. We are the best. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much, Paulette. Um, Paulette is from the Rotary Club of Weymouth, and I'd like to give a shout out to Weymouth. Thank you very much, Weymouth, for um, loaning us Paulette. Um, and at this point, I'll call for a motion to accept the policies and guidelines manuals. Everyone has had an opportunity to examine this uh, document for 45 days, and um, hopefully you have uh, read it and find um, that it, it will be helpful in the future. So um, again, thank you everyone who's worked on this project. Thank you particularly to Russ and Paulette. Um, so is there a motion? I'll make a motion that we accept. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? Any objections? Okay, then um, hearing none, this vote, vote is also by unanimous consent. Um, at this point, I'd like to turn the meeting over to Billy Roberts, who's going to um, provide a description of various supporting documents. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Charlene. Um, uh, I want to call your attention to uh, a couple of, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I want to call atten your attention to a couple of documents. Um, but before I do, I want to just say that every person, every leader, uh, when they assume the, the function of, 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 of leading an organization, they want to really leave, think about leaving the organization better than they found it. And I want to just take this moment to say that Charlene Jarris has done just that. And the, a couple of examples that I'm going to give you uh, fit into that category. The first is our district has never had a crisis management uh, um, protocol. And so she, along with this team, Steve White from the Rotary Club of Wakefield, um, Jill Albright from the Rotary Club of Yarmouth, Beth Fernandes from the Rotary Club of Middletown, Jack Flynn from the Rotary Club of, I think, Fall River, is that Fall right? River, yeah. Fall River, and under Charlene's leadership, put countless numbers of hours into developing this series of, of crisis management protocols. One for non-youth related events, one for locating missing children or dependent persons, another protocol for youth program management procedure for crises, another is a pandemic management procedure for youth exchange. Jenny! Then... Oh. <laughs> I love Zoom. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> kind of scary. <laughs> Okay, and the, the last one, I think this is for crisis for youth exchange. That was a little bit of a crisis. Okay, so there are the five different protocols that have been, been created. 
I think they, they are placed on the website for all to have access to. Uh, and I wanna <laughs> congratulate Charlene for bringing this uh, and making sure that this is delivered to our district. And I hope all of you will join me in thanking her and the committee for working on this really quite extensive project. So let's put our hands together and say thank you. Thank you. Thank the, second, you. the second is that uh, <clears throat> Charlene has also long thought about really creating a way for, for our clubs, particularly the smaller clubs, we have a number of them in the district, to have access to 501 3C status, uh, which, is, uh, which has many benefits. Uh, and so she has initiated along with the committee in the district, the planning, and actually the planning is well underway. It's been, I think, submitted to the government for approval for 5013C status for our district. I don't have the names of all the individuals who were a part of that committee, but they certainly have worked hard and really are about to deliver something that is particularly valuable to the smaller clubs. So again, she is, as these are examples of her leaving the district, leaving the situation better than she found it. So thank you so much, Cheryl. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Billy. Thank you very much. Um, now I have one, one other thing to do, and that is to call on our parliamentarian, Jack Ryan. Jack Ryan, are you there? Yes, I am. Please. Resolution, District 7950, Rotary Year 2020-2021. Whereas the success of this Rotary Year can be attributed to excellent planning and whereas outstanding leadership is implementation of those plans is essential and whereas the excellent leadership provided by District Governor Charlene Jarrett, the support received from her administrator, Roger Carvel and Harvey Thurf, as well as the support given the District Governor from her assistant governors, the, gov the District Governor-elect and the District Governor nominee, as well as her fine working team of District 7950 Rotarians. Be it therefore resolved that we, the members of District 7950, do hereby extend our sincere gratitude to District Governor Charlene, who through all, through all through, confronted with the problems associated with COVID-19 virus, did achieve many successes within the district by her unselfish dedication to our communities, our great country, and in the steadfast adherence to Rotary's theme, Rotary Opens Opportunities. Respectfully submitted, John Jack Ryan, past district governor, chairman, district 7950 resolution committee. Uh, please, please, please join me, friends, in saying uh, hip, hip, hooray, three times. Ready? <laughs> hip, 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 hooray. 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 Hip, hip, hooray. Hooray. hip, hip, hip hooray. hooray. Congratulations, Charlene. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Billy. Thank you, Jack. It's, it's such a pleasure to work with everybody. It's just incredible. I do, I do want to acknowledge um, the 501c3 team, and that would include... Um, um, Bob Mascali, who is our uh, legal beagle on that team, uh, George Pelletier, also of the Falmouth Club, um, Kyle Mull Muller, who is uh, my technical guru tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Cara, Kyle. And um, who am I forgetting? Charlene Jarrist. Uh, who else is on this committee? Oh, I'm not prepared and I'm a little flumped. So please forgive me if I've forgotten anybody. <laughs> um, okay, so. I think that- well, It's nice I, to see you turning pink. <laughs> yeah, I know. <noticed. laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, well, thank you very much. I just, I'm totally unprepared for all of that. Thank you. Um, I think that brings us to the end of the business portion of this meeting. So at this point, we'll um, hear a, a, a motion to adjourn the business portion of this meeting. Oh, moved. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? <laughs>
<laughs> okay. Second. Okay, thank you. By unanimous consent, we are adjourned for this portion of the meeting. Um, this next, this next, um, this next uh, event is really kind of a program. Um, when Harvey was read the minutes for last year, he noted that uh, we lost some Rotarians last year, and this year, um, sadly, we've lost uh, some more. So um, we would like to recognize and and um, give tribute to those Rotarians. So we're going to start uh, that program now. We're going to, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to um, see Pete, you know, address folks individually, but by club. So uh, we'll start with the Rotary Club of Braintree. And the Rotary Club of Braintree recognizes and memorializes Nelson Chin. Nelson Chin joined the Rotary Club of Braintree on March 3rd in 2010. He was employed by the town of Braintree as the director of recreation and community events. He was loved by everyone he met as his positive attitude and honest desire to help everyone was irresistible. Nelson served as Sergeant at Arms where he always showed up early for meetings to set up and stayed late to break down. In between, he would joyfully greet arriving members and guests. He then would walk the room to collect happy bucks and fines, always with a smile. Nelson was instrumental in starting Braintree Beautification Day and leveraged the power of Rotary to make it happen. This is how an, now an annual event where the town comes together to do what they can to clean up and dress up the town. Most recently, he saw an opportunity to get the club involved in Electronic Waste Day. That first event held this past April was a huge success, raising about $10,000 for the club on a Saturday morning. Nelson passed away at the age of 66 on December 18th, 2020, due to complications from COVID-19. He's survived by his beloved wife, Susan, and three children. The Rotary Club of the Bridgewaters says goodbye to Bruce Marquis. Near the end of his second term as president of the Rotary Club of the Bridgewaters, following a long and courageous battle with cancer, Bruce passed away on June 22nd, 2020, at the age of 76. Until the very end, Bruce maintained an active schedule of work and service and provided the Bridgewaters Club with superior leadership. He was an inspiration to all who knew him. Bruce is survived by his wife, Lucy, and their children and two grandsons. Bruce lived the motto, service above self in every way possible. Molded by his life events, he was always willing to support both financially and physically activities that made the lives of others better. He always sought to improve our world in general. Bruce served as treasurer for Rotary District 7950 and worked on district conference committees, closely supporting fellow club members serving in district leadership positions. Bruce held every elected position in the Bridgewaters Club at least once. When his term of office was done, he just kept helping the newly elected office holder. He, he held leadership positions with organizations dedicated to helping those in need. The list is broad and long in areas of community and individual needs. He volunteered at the Brockton Veterans Hospital, served on the Old Colony Y, the Old Colony United Way, and the East Bridgewater Business Association. Prior to his relocation to the Bridgewater area, he served on the boards and held leadership position with many Boston area based service organizations. Somehow he even found time to coach sports and lead sports, youth sports programs in Newton and Quincy, Mass. In 2019, he was inducted into the Quincy North Quincy Football Hall of Fame as a contributor. Among the many Rotary Club events he supported and assisted was the Citizen of the Year recognition event. That event, initiated by Bruce, recognizes and celebrates the unknown heroes that live and make a difference within the communities of West Bridgewater, East Bridgewater, and Bridgewater, respectively. In recognition of all that Bruce has contributed to those communities, the club voted to name the East Bridgewater Citizen of the Year Award in his honor <clears throat> and will be presented in the fall. Bruce is missed by all who knew him in and out of Rotary. The club has suffered the loss of a good friend. He was a very strong adherent of Rotary's motto, service above self. 
Rotary Club of Brockton has lost John Savagas. John, age 95, passed away on January 20th, 2021 at Linden Ponds Continuing Care in Hingham, Mass. He was born on May 28th, 1925 in Brockton, Massachusetts. As a child, he attended Sacred Heart School where he learned English and French while at home Lithuanian was spoken. In 1942, at age 17, John left Brockton High School and enlisted in the U.S. Navy. He served aboard the aircraft carrier USS Bennington in the Pacific Theater during World War II. John completed his high school credits at Marianapolis Preparatory School prior to obtaining a BA in economics at Boston College. In 1953, because of a misread x-ray, he was hospitalized at Valley Forge Hospital as a precautionary measure. That is where he met his future wife, Jean, who was a nurse at the time. They were married in June the same year and settled in Brockton. While working as a management trainee at Shawmut Bank in Boston, John attended night classes at New England School of Law to earn his Juris Doctor. Although John passed the Massachusetts bar exam, he instead pursued a career in banking. He became the manager of the Brockton Credit Union. He was later promoted to CEO and continued in that position until his retirement in 1997. Nurturing the bank became John's lifelong passion and under his management, the BCU became a thriving financial institution, which has since made a successful transition to a commercial bank and is now known as Harbor One Bank. John was a man of boundless energy. In addition to his passion for his work at the bank, he was a centerpiece of the civic community in and around Brockton. John served on the board of directors of the Brockton Hospital, St. Joseph's, nursing home, the Credit Union League of Massachusetts, and of course, the Rotary Club of Brockton. John served as president in the Rotary year 1986-87. As president of the Brockton Rotary Club, John set forth the challenge of increasing membership and his club responded. They conducted the most successful drive for new members in the district. John and his wife, Jean, attended the international convention in Munich, Germany. In his notes, he wrote that the most significant happening at the convention was, uh, was remarks by Matt Caparis, the international president on the issue of women in Rotary. Here it was said, quote, the standards of admissions for women in Rotary will be the same as for men. They must qualify, there must be an open classification, and they must be recommended by a Rotarian. They will not be admitted just because they are female. John closed his year saying, this past year's opportunity to serve as president and to be part of this excellent international organization has certainly been one of the highlights of my life. John is missed by all who knew him. The Rotary Club of Fall River. Dr. John A. Gagliardi, DMD, of Fall River passed away last July at the age of 87. John had been a lifelong resident of the city. John graduated from BMC Durfee High School in 1950. While in high school, John played trumpet in a band called the Rhythm Makers, along with his lifelong friends, Paul Parenti on saxophone and Joe Raposo, piano player, who incidentally is best known for writing the theme songs for the television shows Sesame Street and Three's Company. He received his Bachelor of Science degree from the Massachusetts College of Pharmacology, Pharmacy rather, in 1954. Following college, John served four years in the U.S. Army in Germany. After serving his country, John became a dentist, receiving his doctorate from Tufts University Dental School in 1962. After dental school, John re-enlisted in the Army where he earned the rank of captain. He was stationed in Vicenza, Italy, where he met the love of his life, Liliana Lodi. John practiced dentistry for over 46 years. He was an instructor for the Diamond Regional Vocational Technical High School Dental Assistant Program for postgraduates. Past president of the Fall River Dental Society, he was a member of the American Dental Association and the Fall River Fluoride Committee. He cast the deciding vote on establishing a dental clinic for the Head Start program. He was a very long time member of the Fall River Rotary Club. So long, in fact, that we were unable to determine when he actually joined. I've been a member for 29 years and John had been a long standing member when I arrived. John was an avid football fan and season ticket holder of the New England Patriots since 1971. John was also an avid soccer fan attending many New England Revolution games. And I know that he was a fine human being. 
Rotary Club of Martha's Vineyard has lost John C. Hart. <clears throat> grew up in Bath, Maine. <clears throat> Excuse me, James, James grew up in um, Bath, Maine and proudly served in the United States Navy as an aviation electrician. Jim was deeply involved with civic organizations throughout his life, starting with the radio club in high school to Eastern Air Airlines um, retirees and of course, Rotary International. Jim was district governor from 1979 to 1980 of the Hartford, Connecticut Rotary area. Jim was also actively involved in Springfield Mast, Summers, Connecticut, Martha's Vineyard Mass and Palm Beach, Florida Rotary Clubs. The Martha's Vineyard Rotary is planning a Jim Hart Memorial Award in his honor at the 2021 installation event. Jim was the perpetual storyteller from his escapades on the milk delivery truck to his jaunts around the world with the Navy and Eastern Airlines. After retiring, he enjoyed many years living on Martha's Vineyard during the summer where he enjoyed his boat and went fishing with his brother-in-law Wolfgang. During the winter, he stayed in West Palm Beach, Florida, enjoying the warmth of the weather and, the, and friends. While in Florida, he served on the Condo Association of the Lakeside Village and of course, Rotary International. <coughs> Dr. Basil Jones. Dr. Basil Clinton Jones died peacefully on January 14th. He was 93. Basil was born on March 10th, 1927 in Brooklyn, New York. He was a World War II veteran, anesthesiologist, husband, and father. At the time of his death, he and his wife, Marcy, had been married for 67 years. Marcy survives him and continues to reside in the room they shared at the Windermere Nursing Home in their beloved Martha's Vineyard. Known for his gregarious personality, Basil always also enjoyed his quiet times reading, woodworking, charting the stars, and weaving. He was a proud graduate of Boys High in Brooklyn with many of his classmates becoming lifelong friends. Stoked by intellect and resolved after serving in the war, Basil graduated from Howard University and Howard Medical School, class of 1956. Establishing a lovely home in Brooklyn with his wife, two daughters and mother-in-law, he worked hard and established with his colleagues the first African-American anesthesiology practice that serves hospitals throughout Brooklyn and Queens. Even with his hectic work schedule, he found time to play golf and be an active member of the Alpha Sigma Boule and the Guardsmen. After retiring, he and Marcy decided to leave Brooklyn and permanently live on the vineyard where they had summered with family since they visited on their honeymoon. On the island, Basil was an active member of the Rotary Club where he was awarded the Paul Harris Fellow Recognition Award in 2019 for his contribution to the club and the first and third club. He enjoyed playing golf and poker and always looked forward to a Saturday morning breakfast with the boys. He loved life and as his body began to fail him and the things he loved most began uh, to being difficult to do, he maintained his joy as best he could. In addition to his wife, Marcy, he is survived by many friends, especially club members who remember him fond fondly. Rotary Club of Middleborough. <clears throat> this one's a little unusual. Um, this is Janice Sackett. Janice was the beloved wife of Bob Sackett, past president and stalwart of the Rotary Club of Middleborough for over 50 years. In times past, Janice would have been thought of as a Rotary Ann. However, she was actually an integral part of Bob's Rotary activities all along the way. She was a devoted wife, loving mother and caring friend to everyone. Her home was open and all were welcome. Holiday meals often fed 25 or more people. There were always room for one more at her table. She organized family reunions known as hummus summits that recognized her husband's Lebanese ancestry. Janice loved to travel and her favorite destination was New Orleans where she fell in love with the music, dancing culture and the food. Over the years, she traveled with her husband to Thailand, Italy, Canada, Mexico, France, Romania and to Prague in the Czech Republic. They also went on many cruises on the Mississippi River and to the Bahamas, Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico. In recent years, she was able to visit Mount Rushmore and the Grand Canyon. Janice was the child of Polish immigrants. She was proud of her Polish heritage, could dance a spirited polka and loved preparing meals of pierogies, kapushka and kielbasa. 
After high school, she attended nursing school in Rochester, New York. She met her husband, Robert, while working as a registered nurse in Boston, and they were married in 1966. A year later, they moved to Mansfield where they raised their four children. Janice was an avid Red Sox fan, cheered for the Patriots and never missed an episode of Jeopardy. She enjoyed reading, sewing and teaching her granddaughter to knit. As a wife and mother, she was proud of everyone's accomplishments. She shared her husband's enthusiasm for public service and business. As grandchildren were born, she traveled near and far to guide their young mothers. Over the years, Janice had been active in Mansfield High School Band Parents and the League of Women Voters. Most recently, she was part of Live Strong, a support group for cancer survivors sponsored by the YMCA, where she made many friendships. For several years, she was a registered nurse at Morton Hospital in Taunton. She also helped at the family business Eggers Furniture Company in Middleborough, and prior to retirement was employed at Good Samaritan Medical Center. Janice met, meant so much to so many people and is missed by friends and family alike. <clears throat> Rotary Club of North at Orleans has said goodbye to Bill Snow. The North at Orleans Rotary Club was saddened to learn of the passing of, of longtime member William Cullum Snow on February 11th, 2021. He was most recently had been an honorary member of the club after having joined the Orleans Rotary Club in 1956. He had enjoyed perfect attendance for over 50 years and was a Paul Harris Fellow and benefactor since 1993. Bill served as club president in 1966-67 and later as club secretary for many years. Bill's father, Harry Snow, was a charter member of the Rotary Club of Orleans. Bill, along with his brothers, Robert and Stanley, became the fourth generation to manage the family business, H.H. Snow and Sons, now Snow's Home and Garden. So William was CEO and president of the business until he retired in 2005. Both in business and in life, Bill embodied the values of acting with integrity, respecting others, and contributing to the community. William took pride in being a supporter of the community. He was an original founder of the Cape Cod Foundation, a director for both the Cape Cod Hospital and the Cape Cod Bank and Trust, a devoted member of the Orleans Rotary Club for 60 years and a 40 year member of the Cape Cod Symphony. Throughout his life, William was involved in several other organizations, including the Board of Trade, Chamber of Commerce, Planning Board, Cape Cod and the Islands Council, Boy Scouts and Sea Scouts, Chip 72. He was also a member of the Federated Church of Orleans. The Rotary Club of New Bedford has lost Linda Sufera. Linda joined the Rotary Club of New Bedford in 2006 and was a very active member. She served as club president in 2015-16. She held the office of secretary for many years. She was also chair of the Community Foundation and Allocations Committee. Linda was a very active member of the scholarship committee and participated in all club activities. Linda was named a Paul Harris Fellow twice during her tenure. She was an outstanding Rotarian. Outside of Rotary, Linda was well known and very active in the community. She was co-owner broker of the Gold Star Realty for 25 years prior to her passing. She also served on the board of the Veterans Transition Home. Linda was an integral part of the New Bedford Club, working tirelessly to help raise thousands of dollars for needy charities. Linda battled courageously for a year. She was a kind person who set a good example for those around her and she is greatly missed. The Rotary Club of Providence has lost Stanley Sorrentino. <clears throat> Stanley was born in 1928 in Providence and was educated at Moses Brown School, Admiral Farragut Naval Academy and Colby College, Waterville, Maine, majoring in business and religion. After living in Waterville, Maine with his young bride, he later lived in Barrington, Cumberland, Providence, and Little Compton, his favorite place in the world. He was a generous, loyal, and loving husband, father, grandfather, and friend, wow. often planning gatherings and surprise events so that all could be together and enjoy each other's company. He started working part-time at the family-owned jewelry company. Uncas it's the big Hatch, annual. In 1946. And full-time after college in 1951. He worked there for 46 years, eventually becoming president and CEO in 1976 and chairman of the board from 1991 to 98. Stanley was an active leader in many community organizations throughout his life. 
He'd been a loyal member of the Providence Rotary Club since 1966, becoming an honorary member in 2015. President 1996-97, Rotary Foundation member 1992-97, and Rotary Board member. He received the Paul Harris recognition several times and in 2011 was awarded Rotarian of the Century. His hobbies included magic, bottle collecting, vegetable gardening, spear fishing, scuba diving, and jogging, having participated in the five mile road race in Little Compton every five years since the age of 50. He was a member of the Rhode Island Magicians Club and International Brotherhood of Magicians. He performed magic semi-professionally while attending college in Maine. The great, great uncle Stanley gave many magic shows for his family, nieces and nephews and friends. He was also an avid Patriots and Red Sox fan. <clears throat> the Rotary Club of Situate Mass has said goodbye to Lois Brandis. Lois passed away at the South Shore Hospital in Weymouth, Massachusetts in April. As a very young girl, she played the piano and organ in the Church of the Nazarene in Brockton, where her father was the pastor. Lois and her sisters performed for a church radio broadcast, the quote, The Voice of Comfort, and Lois began this when she was only three and a half years old and continued from early childhood for many, many years. Lois graduated from Brockton High School and then attended Eastern, Naz Eastern Nazarene College in Quincy, Mass, where she earned a degree in elementary education and completed all but one course in a second major in music with a concentration in applied voice. She had a gorgeous soprano voice and was a soloist at numerous important events. After graduating from ENC, Lois taught grades one, two, and three at the Squantum Elementary School in Quincy, Mass for 41 years, where she was supremely loved by her students, their parents, and all administrators. Lois also served as organist, pianist, and choir master at several churches, including eight years at Christ Lutheran Church in Situate. While at college, she met, dated, and married Lambert Willard Brandis, who taught music, organ, and acoustics at ENC for 53 years. They worked together in many churches beginning immediately after they were married with 15 years at Bethany Cong Congregational Church in Quincy, Mass. There, they virtually adopted an eight-year-old boy named Thomas Rosella and taught him to play the piano and organ. He then attended and graduated from ENC and now has earned his master's degree in doctorate in music. The bond was so strong that he addressed Lois and Lambert as mom and pops. Tom has now performed worldwide. He and his church choir were invited to provide the opening music for a Christmas celebration at the house, White House just a few years ago. <clears throat> The Rotary Club of Warwick has said goodbye to Donald Morash. Don Morash passed away last December of COVID-19. His passing was sudden and felt deeply. Born in Boston, Don lived in Quincy, Mass before moving to Warwick in 1970. He was a US Air Force veteran. Don was a broker owner of Abbott Properties Real Estate, LLC. He was a Warwick Rotarian for 27 years and served as president from 2002 to 2003. Don has been involved in many organizations, including the March of Dimes, West Bay Habitat for Humanity, Junior Achievement, Boys and Girls Club, SBA National Advisory Council, Central Rhode Island Chamber of Commerce, East Greenwich Chamber of Commerce, Kent Washington Board of Directors, Providence Board of Realtors, Rhode Island Commercial Board of Realtors, as well as the Rhode Island Association of Realtors and National Association of Realtors. Don was also on the Zoning Board of Warwick, serving as its chairman until the time of his passing. He was a member of the East Greenwich Yacht Club and past member of the Potawatomi Club. As a, as a Rotarian, Don's classification was commercial real estate. Don had perfect attendance for 12 years and he was working on 13 and was a Paul Harris Fellow. Don was well liked and is now missed by all who knew him. Robert Haig. <clears throat> Robert Haig, age 73, of Warwick, passed away at home, surrounded by his family this past April. He and his wife Pamela were married for 51 years. Rotary was extremely important to him, attending club meetings via Zoom right until the end. Born in Providence, he was a lifelong Warwick resident. A 1970 graduate of Bryant College, now Bryant University, he earned a bachelor's degree in business. Bob was the founder and president of healthcare services in Providence for 49 years. 
He was also a partner in Capital Home Care Network in Providence and a founding member of the Rhode Island Partnership for Home Care. Bob was a devoted member of the Rotary Club of Warwick for the past 34 years, a past president and a past member of its board of directors. He was proud of his 18 years of perfect attendance at Rotary meetings. Bob was honored by the Warwick Rotary as a Paul Harris Fellow and served as direct executive director of the Warwick Rotary Foundation. Always an active community volunteer, he was a former troop leader for his son Michael's Boy Scout Troop number 183. An avid boater, Bob took great enjoyment in cruising with his wife and family on the waters of Narragansett Bay and the entire Eastern Seaboard on his boat after four. He was a member of the East Greenwich Yacht Club. When he wasn't boating or planning the next trip, he could be found reading a book at the kitchen table or on the porch. Bob and his wife, Pam, enjoyed traveling the world, including trips to Cuba, Singapore, cruising the Panama Canal, and spent many winters in Key West, Florida. A dedicated swimmer, he was a regular presence and known for his speedo at Warwick's McDermott Pool. The Rotary Club of Yarmouth has lost several people. <clears throat> the first is Matthew Johnson. Matthew Herbert Johnson of Yarmouth Port, Port Mass and formerly of Western Connecticut passed away last November. Born in Plymouth, Mass, January 22, 1929, he was raised in Pomfret, Connecticut. He graduated from Putnam High School in 1947, where he excelled in all sports and received a full scholarship to the University of Connecticut. He earned his master's degree from Springfield College. After graduation with a degree in physical education, Matt married his high school sweetheart, Francis, and moved to Westport, Connecticut, where he was hired by the YMCA and eventually became the executive director for the rest of his career. He was founder and coach for the Staples High School swim team. He spent many years in youth sports and activities in Western Connecticut, where he and Francis moved in 1959. He was an active member of the Western Volunteer Fire Department and St. Francis of Assisi Church. Matt was an original member of the Fairfield County Football Official Association and was inducted into the Connecticut Football Officials Hall of Fame. Matt was a member of the Westport, Connecticut and Yarmouth Port Mass Rotary Clubs. Matt and Fran's love of travel brought them around the world, but their love was their summer home on Cape Cod. After retirement, Matt and Fran volunteered for the Jerusalem YMCA in Israel. His greatest enjoyment were his grandchildren and their multiple activities. He was an avid Red Sox and Yukon Husky fan. Excuse me, after losing Francis in 2013, Matt moved permanently to Cape Cod where he continued to play golf, socialize and volunteer. <clears throat> Bob Huckman. Bob Huckman was a founding member of the Rotary Club of Yarmouth. He was instrumental in starting the golf tournament, a highly successful fundraiser. Bob and his wife held numerous Rotary Fellowship dinners at their home. Bob always wore a sports coat to meeting. He was truly a gentleman. His pride in his involvement in Rotary, both locally and beyond, made him an active participant. He was also known to give sound advice. <clears throat> Ken Jenks. Kenneth T. Jenks, 62, of South Dennis, passed away in March. He and his wife Brenda were married for 40 years. Kenneth grew up in North Attleboro and graduated from North Attleboro High School in 1976. He earned his bachelor's degree from the University of Massachusetts in Amherst and his master's degree from the Bridgewater State College in Bridgewater. Kenneth joined the Dennis Yarmouth Regional School District in 1984 as a history teacher. He had many achievements in his rewarding career, including serving as president of the teachers union, summer school principal, key club advisor, assistant principal, principal and assistant superintendent. His ded dedication, enthusiasm and compassion formed the foundation of the legacy he leaves behind. Among his many hobbies, he was an avid photographer. He also enjoyed reading, especially about history, train watching, bird watching, chess, hike, chess, hiking in the woods, and walking on the beach. He could always be found cheering on his granddaughter while she played field hockey. Most of all, he was so proud of his family and enjoyed their many memorable moments. Ken Jenks was the assistant, assistant principal 
He was always a supporter of youth programs and um, interact and exchange. Kathleen St. George. Kathy St. George joined Rotary after her husband's unexpected death from a heart attack. After her husband's death, the club became almost 200% CPR certified, that is Rotarians and partners. Kathy was active on the organizational side of the golf tournament, Christmas party, and other activities. She and her husband laid out, printed, and distributed the Yarmouth Club newsletter for over 20 years. Kathy was one of those highly valued, quiet, hardworking Rotarians, and she is missed. We say goodbye to our, our Rotarian friends. And I'd like to share um, a poem that I think fits this moment. <clears throat> the title of this poem is We Thought of You Today. We thought of you with love today, but that is nothing new. We thought about you yesterday and days before that too. We think of you in silence. We often speak your name. All we have are memories and your picture in our frame. We think of you always and make no outward show. Only those who love you for what it meant to lose you know. Your memory is our keepsake with which we'll never part. God has you in his keeping, and we have you in our hearts.
<clears throat> thank you. I'd like to especially thank um, Jill Albright and Kyle Mueller for um, support in, um, in putting that presentation together. Uh, I truly appreciate it. It's hard to say goodbye to good friends, um, but it's very important that we remember that we remember them and um, and their whole life, um, not just one aspect of it. So thank you very much. So now we're going to change gears totally and completely, and we're going to talk about awards. Um, before we move on to awards, though, um, I'd like to acknowledge and thank the continuity team for all their hard work and support this year. As for our wonderful assistant governor team, I would especially like to thank those assistant governors who will be stepping back at the end of this Rotary year. That would include Brad Boyd, <clears throat> excuse me, Bob Mascali, Mark Ferreira, Laurie Percio, who will continue as um, assistant coordinator, assistant governor coordinator, Shamim Awen, um, Chuck Sauer, and Sue Heller. Teammates, uh, Joanne Tully, Joel Kopke, Steve, Stephen Saverin, Paula Raposa, and Sharon Johnson will continue to support clubs next year. Okay. Thank you all. Most of the following awards are um, district awards. Rotary International will be, um, awards will be um, presented in the fall. <clears throat> Um, I'd like to start with special uh, anniversaries for clubs. Excuse me. I've been struggling all day because of the pollen and I've been fighting for a voice. So please uh, forgive me as I go along. Um, noting 50 years of club membership and service this year would be the Rotary Club of Foxborough, the Rotary Club of Middleborough and the Rotary Club of Situate. Celebrating 75 years of membership this past year, 2020-2021, uh, is the Rotary Club of East Providence and Seekonk. And celebrating 100 years of service to their communities, uh, the Rotary Club of Fall River and the Rotary Club of Taunton. And I'd like to give a round of applause for all of them. So we're going to move into club awards presentations. I know that we're all likely tired of hearing that this past year has been an unprecedented year, but it was an unprecedented year. Even though that's true, our clubs rose to the every challenge. A number of our clubs earned club awards. Because I do not want clubs to wait for hand delivery, I will be mailing awards to clubs, uh, club presidents within a week or so. So this is going to be fun. So that you understand each club award, I'll explain the criteria prior to the first time that it is presented. And the first is a public image award. And this is awarded for the use of both traditional and social media for the betterment of Rotary International. And the first one that I'm gonna mention for this award is the uh, Rotary Club of Barnstable Sunrise. Congratulations on your public image award. The next award I would like to explain is the District Governor's Award of Excellence, <laughs> which uh, was adapt adapted for this COVID year. Um, clubs needed to complete nine of 16 categories or tasks. So the first one that's going to uh, receive this award is the Bourne Sandwich Club, and they are receiving the Rotary, uh, the District Governor's Award of Excellence. The Brain Tree Club will be receiving the District Governor's Award of Excellence and the Public Image Award. The Bridgewaters Club will be receiving the District Governor's Award of Excellence and the Public Image Award. Brockton receives the Public Image Award. Vibrant, I'm going to explain Vibrant Club and Significant Achievement Award, which is pretty not so much to explain. I mean, it's pretty much in the, in the title of the award. Um, Vibrant Club and Significant Achievement. Uh, so Charaho is um, going to receive a couple of those. He, they're also going to receive a District Governor's Award of Excellence. Let me talk about Charaho for a second. They're going to get, uh, the club is going to get Vibrant Club and Significant Achievement Award. award. The Charaho Interact Club is going to receive a, a 
a Vibrant Club and Significant Achievement Award. Charaho Interact receives that award uh, for school and COVID related projects. They have been very busy over the course of the year. The Rotary Club of Charaho is going to receive that award for supporting this Interact Club to the max. This has been a very tough year because of the interruption in the academic schedules. Our Interact Clubs um, were not able to be so active. So the clubs that um, were active, it's, it's just really outstanding that they were able to do this. Um, Charaho is also going to receive a public image award. <clears throat> East Providence Seekonk is going to receive the District Governor's Award of Excellence and Public Image Award. The Rotary Club of Fall River is going to receive the District Governor's Award of Excellence, the Public Image Award, and Vibrant Club and Significant Achievement Award for their Happy Feet project. Hyannis is going to receive Public Image Award. Middleborough has earned a District Governor Award of Excellence, Public Image Award, a Vibrant Club and Significant Achievement Award. Um, they're receiving this award for their motorcycle raffle to support the food bank, as well as club members baking 400 loaves of cranberry bread to be included in holiday food baskets. The Plymouth Club is receiving a public image award. The Plymouth Sunrise Club is receiving a district governor award of excellence. The Rotary Club of Providence is receiving a public image award. The Rotary Club of Situate, Rhode Island is receiving a District Governor's Award of Excellence, Public Image Award, and the Vibrant Club and Significant Achievement Award for its two-story playhouse at the Situate Rotary Playground. The Taunton Club is receiving a District Governor's Award of Excellence and Public Image. Westerly is receiving a District Governor's Award of Excellence, a Vibrant Club and Significant Achievement Award, and a Public Image Award. Weymouth is receiving the District Governor's Award of Excellence and the Public Image Award. And Yarmouth is going to receive the District Governor's Award of Excellence, Vibrant Club and Significant Achievement Award and Public Image Award. Excuse me. <clears throat> and um, all of those awards, as I say, will be on their way to the club presidents. I'd like to tell you about um, our Service Longevity Awards. These are individual awards, obviously. And um, I'm also going to tell you about those by club. The Braintree Club. Raymond Duffy has been a Rotarian for 52 years. Brockton Club. Tom Sampson, 50 years. Jack Butler, 51 years. Gino Ayali, 54 years. Cranston, Lou Marciano has been a Rotarian for 49 years. Fall River Club, the Walter, Walter Gordon has been a Rotarian for 42 years. Tom McGar has been a Rotarian for 42 years. Rick Dreyer has been a Rotarian for 48 years. Richard LaFrance has been a Rotarian for 49 years. And Garrett Sanford has been a Rotarian for 53 years. We don't leave. <laughs> The Harwich Dentist Club. Ron Dalgallo is celebrating 39 years. Howard Kelly, 43 years. Phil Baroni, 50, I think 56. We were having a little trouble with, um, with uh, the um, calculating that actually. So that's up for discussion, but he's definitely been a long-term Rotarian. And David Sherman, 59 years. The Hyannis Club, Dan Treeman, 64 years. Milton Club, Dr. Frank Guliano, 56 years. Osterville, this is really interesting. These folks uh, joined the same day, May, I think May 22nd, um, 47 years ago. Mark Cody, Roy Richardson, Carl Rydell, Alan White, and Stu People joined, Stu Peoples joined them two years later. So he's celebrating 45 years. Pawtucket Club, Dwight Douglas is celebrating 58 years. Plymouth Club, Edward Santos is 51 years and Brian Alosi is 50 years. The Providence Club, Ralph Barlow is 50 years. Warwick Club, Gordon Wilmot, 53 years. And Westerly Club, Vincent Gaccioni, 61 years. Joseph Negrelli, 53 years. And Douglas Rayner, 50 years. The Weymouth Club, Edward De DeLuca celebrates 65 years as a Rotarian. The Yarmouth Club, John Hur is 53 years. Robert Wells is 54 years. Thomas Urich is 59 years. 
So we need to stay around and do good for all that time. Those folks have set a wonderful standard for us. We also have several people in the district celebrating long-term perfect attendance. Now I know that the movement um, now is away from uh, recognizing perfect attendance, but as somebody who has perfect attendance for 29 years, I'm not in a rush to get rid of it. <laughs> so Middleborough, um, Peter Regus, 42 years perfect attendance. Bob Sackett, 42 years perfect attendance. And in Providence, no James Gilchrist has 47 years of perfect attendance. <clears throat> Those are individual awards. I have um, some special awards that I'd like to present. As you know, Northeast Pets does an excellent job in giving incoming club presidents the tools they'll need to lead their clubs through a successful year. However, there was no training at the Northeast Pets program to prepare current club presidents for the year of pandemic. As we went through the year, it was clear to me that our club presidents were successfully navigating uncharted territory. I wanted to recognize that. So each current club president will receive a certificate suitable for framing. Let's see if I can find this one. Right here, suitable for framing. <laughs> it acknowledges that. And what we're acknowledging is a district governor COVID, COVID president award. Okay. And the certificate reads, in recognition, in recognition of your ability to pivot, guided by your leadership, your club responded to those in need throughout the COVID-19 pandemic in innovative ways. Utilizing your members' expertise, resources, and dedication, you continued to improve the lives of, of folks locally and global community. It's very, very well deserved. The second award is from um, Rotary International, and this is a very special award uh, from George Bab Babcock of the Rotary Club of Providence has been awarded the Rotary International Avenue of Service Community Service Award. George is a member of that club, uh, which has adopted literacy as its special passion. George led an initiative that created a virtual online literacy program which made books available to 5,000 middle school students in the Providence Public Schools. George and his club are working to level the playing field for less privileged children. Well done, George. I started out saying that this year was very unusual. As a result, I looked at projects that related to COVID activities and relief. So we created a special district governor's COVID award of excellence. The following clubs qualified for this special recognition. East Providence and Seekonk um, gets this award for a community outreach for the Ask a Banker program, which um, allowed people to call in and ask COVID related questions of bank of banking panel. The Falmouth Club, uh, receives it for the Falmouth Art Outdoor Learning Project. And that's exactly what they did. They basically created a situation where school could be held outside. Um, the Hyannis Club uh, gets the award for Building Desks, Building Lives, a project that I told you about in one of the newsletters. And Westerly receives it for its Random Act of Rotary Project, where they partnered with the Chamber of Commerce and distributed $25 gift cards gift certificates to um, random people in, in Westerly to both help them and also help the, the local businesses. I'm also awarding a district governor COVID award of excellence to our, our district disaster and trailer project. Ed McDonough, past assistant governor, um, heads it up and Craig Wolf representative for delivering PPE meals and community food drives all over the area. Congratulations to everyone for meeting those unexpected challenges. I also have one more special uh, award to announce. There have been three major themes that have guided my year this year. The first is my lifelong passion to be part of the eradication of polio. The second was to elevate Rotaract to be on a par with our Rotary clubs. This effort was severely hindered by the pandemic, but I have high hopes for next year. And the third was, is a commitment to diversity equity and inclusion and the necessary social justice that needs to follow. 
In that regard, I am awarding the brand new Social Justice Award to the Rotary Club of Duxbury. Prior to this Rotary year, the members of this club started a local organization called Prejudice Free Duxbury. They partnered with other organizations in town to talk about these things and to make changes, work to make changes. The organization morphed into Duxbury for All, which creates a very positive space within which to work for change. So the citation reads, in recognition of your effort to further the development of an inclusive community by promoting communication and understanding of different cultures. This effort, which has been joined by other like-minded organizations is taking steps to make all feel safe and comfortable in Duxbury. Congratulations, Duxbury. You really lead the way and uh, we, we couldn't be more proud. <clears throat> Thank you everyone for all of your hard work. It's been an incredible year and we do have one more award to present. This final award is the Dr. Percy Hodgson Memorial Award. The late Dr. Percy Hodgson was a member of the Rotary Club of Pawtucket, who served as governor of District 198, one of our predecessors in 1939-1940. He later went on to the position of Rotary International Director and in 1949-1950 to president of Rotary International. A resolution was passed at the 1989 District Conference to establish the annual Dr. Percy Hodgson Award in memory of his leadership, assistance, and service above self. The honor is bestowed by an award panel of seven members, including the district governor, which selects a Rotarian who cannot be a past district governor who has contributed exceptional service to his club or his or her club or to the district follow, uh, during the preceding years. This year's selectee answers the call to service above self to both his club and the district. I'm not going to keep him wondering what, if what I'm going to say sounds like him. His name is Harvey Treef and he is past president of the Rotary Club of Fall River. Now, let me tell you a little bit about him. Harvey Treef, no way. <laughs> <laughs> Harvey joined the Rotary Club of Fall River in 2001. <laughs> he was president in 2005-2006. He chaired the Rotary Club Service Committee. Uh, he, cha he chairs the Awards and Allocation Committee. He's been club treasurer, club secretary. He served on the board. He's serving as director of the Club Charitable Trust a member of the bylaw committee, a member of the nominating committee, he's a member of the Paul Harris committee, and he's allocated and distributed masks during the Million Mask Challenge. Harvey is the person who lines up all the volunteers for us for every project that we're involved with. Harvey is indispensable. As far as his participation in District 7950, he is currently the district secretary from 2017 to present and he's a member of the district continuity team also. He's a facilitator at club secretary breakout sessions during district assemblies. <laughs> In terms of his community uh, involvement, um, Harvey has been awarded the John S. Brayton Community Service Award by the Chamber of Commerce, which in our little corner of the world is a very, very big deal. He served on many local boards of directors He's, participant, he's a participant in the United Way Food Distribution Program. And he's also a, a veteran a, from the US Air Force 1961 to 1965. And I can tell you for a fact that my friend Harvey can write a mean poem and do, will do so if asked nicely. So congratulations to you, Harvey. This is incredibly well-deserved and I'm just loving watching this going on. What a treat. Yay. 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 If anybody heard the comment, I gotta jump in my truck and get out of here. <laughs> <laughs>
I was really happy to hear that, Roger. <laughs> Hello. Hi, everybody. I am privileged. This is unusual. You have too many phones on. We have too many phones. We, it's, we got echoes. Let me do this. Which to our Somebody needs to mute if you can mute. Probably me. I think it's Roger. Roger, you should mute. Can you mute? Um, okay, Harvey, go for it. Oh, go I, for it, Harvey. I, I, want, I, I don't know what to say, which for me is very unusual. Yes, but I, when I joined Rotary in 2001, I absolutely had no idea what I was getting into. And it turned out to be the most incredible experience of my life, a life-changing experience for me. I, I, don't, I, I have to thank my sponsor, who is Doreen Menzies, and all of the mentors in the Rotary Club of Fall River, Charlene, Roger. There's just no end to the amount of people. I especially want to say thank you to my amazing wife, Judy, for putting up with the meetings and all, all the uh, events that we, that we uh, talk about. I, I'm running out of words. Thank you all very, very much. I am truly, truly touched. Congratulations, Dad. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Congratulations, Harvey. Where? Oh, look on the somewhere. <laughs> my daughter is here. Both of them. Yeah. Oh my We're God. both here. Congratulations, um, Harvey from Benvinda uh, We are together here listening to this great honor. Uh, Congratulations. Oh yes, Harvey, we are the very three of us are here. Here. Congratulations, Harvey. Congratulations, Harvey. Congratulations, Harvey. We love you. You're the best. I, I love everybody. Thank you for, for Zoom. That's all I can say. <laughs> and thank you, Dr. Percy Hodge. <laughs> 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 I'll I will share. I will share the. There were, there were, yeah, I, I'm at this point, I'm kaflept. I just, I'm just so delighted that, that, um, that you're with, with us here and all the wonderful things that you do both for Fall River and the district. Harvey, um, it's been a real pleasure working with you on the club level and on this level. And I know that when I run into, run into an issue or a jam, I know I can call on you and you never say, what, what do you, you always say, yes, I can do that for you. Yes, yes, uh -huh. I can. The, so, the, thank you. the pleasure goes both ways, Charlene. It's been a, it, it's been a pleasure working with you and knowing you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. So Congratulations. Thank, thank you. Congratulations, thank you, Dad. Thank, thank you, love everybody. You. Okay. Well, thank you. this this is like the highlight of this. Next year, I hope that we're doing all of this stuff in person, and. Um, I guess I should ask if anyone wants to bring any other business to this meeting. If not, then I'm going to um, entertain it for entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, can I just say one more quick thing? Sure. Yeah, last, last year when my great, great friend Roger got this award, I was speechless for him and I know how much he worked and how hard he worked and how much he deserved it. And I, putting myself in that same category is a big, <laughs> big stretch. <laughs> now, very, very deserving, Harvey. Not, not to fret. Very, very deserving. Thank you for all that you do. I just want to say good night, everybody. Thank you so much for everything that you've done for your for your club and for the district this year and for Rotary International. It's so exciting and, and rewarding to be part of an organization that, that operates locally and also globally. And our, our purpose is to really do good in the world. And, and um, I have to say, you know, best wishes to everyone. You are really knocking it out of the park. So thank you very much, everyone. I'm going to say good night and I hope to see you all soon.